Welcome back to Mac Break Studio. Uh, we're here in the studio with Mark Spencer. We're talking Final Cut Pro and audio crossfades, which, by the way, was in my top things I want in Final Cut Pro 10, audio crossfades. Uh, but you're going to show us how to do audio crossfades. Until the thing you want is there, there here's, here's something we can do. Fantastic. And I, I love it because it uses a little bit of motion. So first, um, I'm, I'm here and I've built a little edit. And it's representative of something similar I did recently. It's not the real edit, but it's very representative of it, which is basically I've got a music track that's a connected clip that's connected to a tiny gap clip at the beginning that allows me to freely reorganize my existing clips. It's actually, it's not connected to a gap clip there. Um, but I can reorganize my clips as I want, and I'm not going to affect the music track. But basically, I'm done the edit now, and I don't want to really see other stuff. And you told me this great term, um, kind of selective disclosure. Progressive. Pro progressive disclosure. <laughs> like only show the things you really need to work on. Right. Now, I don't really care about the browser or the inspector anymore for this part. So I'm going to hit Command-4 to close in the inspector and Control-Command-1 to close the browser and the isn't, libraries isn't list. It's cleaner? Your it's room's all clean, clean now. Right. It's, it's nice. very clean, and I can just be focused on my timeline. Now, what my goal is, I've got some music, but I've also got natural sound with these clips, and I'd like to keep the natural sound it's a little montage of clips set to music, but that natural sound is going to immediately be jarring from one clip to the next to the next. Right. So ideally, I'd like to crossfade the audio from each of those clips, right? But I don't want to crossfade the video. I like the hard cuts as I go from shot to shot. Sure. So this turns out can be a little bit tricky in Final Cut Pro 10. One way you might do that is I can select all these t clips and right click or use control S to expand audio video. From there, what I can do is for each of these clips, I can basically drag out to find one that doesn't have, there we go, create a little bit overlaps. of extra handles. I can create overlap uh, manually, and let me command plus to zoom in a little bit. And then once I've created that overlap, I can also drag out these other clips to create a little more overlap so that we've got some nice overlap between them. And then to fade them, I can drag the little fade handles and create a nice fade from one to the next. Which is typically the way you want to do it. Um, but it's a lot right. of work. It gives, it gives me a lot of manual control to determine exactly how long that fade is. If I right click on the fade handle itself, I can choose the type of fade that I use. And it can make a nice fade. Shift Z to fit it to the window. Scroll down a little bit. Let's make a little more room in our timeline. And you can see now I've got a nice cross fade for that clip. Of course, I would need to do it for each of them, and if I have 30 or 40 or 50, that could take a little bit of time. Absolutely. So I want to show you a better way. So I'm going to undo that, press Command undo, Command Z a few times. There we go. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to put these back together. I'm going to hit Control S to collapse them back down. So Final Cut Pro has a cross dissolve transition, and there's a keyboard shortcut for it because it's the default, which is Command T. So if I select these clips and press Command T, I get a video transition put on them. But it's actually more than video. Check this out. If I now press Control S to expand the audio and video, look at that. I've got this beautiful uh, checkerboard. Kind of checkerboard. And they're it's overlapped not, with it. technically a checkerboard because there's overlap, but I've got this nice overlap of each of the audio clips. So this is exactly what I want with the audio. However, the video, if, we, if I play through one of these cuts. It's a, trend. It's a the, crossfade. Yeah, the video now crossfades from one clip to the next. Not what I want, right? right. So um, you might think, well, I'll just select the video uh, transition there, the little crossfade, and press delete. But notice if I delete the video transition. You lose the crossfade. I lose the crossfade for the audio. It's like, ah, that's not really what I want. So here's how we can solve this um, dilemma and do this very, very quickly. So I'm just going to undo those, undo those, and I'm going to recollapse everything here. Control S. So what I'm going to do is use motion. And this is where this is so cool. So I'm going to launch motion, and I'm going to create a final cut transition. This is the easiest possible thing you can do in motion. Without knowing anything about yeah, it. This is easier than anything that I've ever, because I, I know I said that a lot, but this is the easiest thing. Because all you do is select this final cut transition. You say open. And when it opens, you press Command S to save it. That's it? <laughs> yeah, that's the whole thing. And you don't do anything? That's the whole thing. No. You do, you got an even a, a, a name. So audio cross fade. Uh, and you can give it a category, like put it in a custom category. And then you click publish. 
Okay, I'm going to cancel because I've already done that, but that's all you need to do. And then when I go back to Final Cut Pro and I go into transitions within the custom category, there's my audio crossfade. Does it say copy? Yeah, it'll. Well, no, no, because uh, this this isn't copying an existing thing in, in Final Cut. Oh, you this made, is it, you made it from fresh. Yeah. Right, of course. So I made a fresh new thing called Audio Crossfade. So now, if I select these clips and double click this Audio Crossfade, it added um, video transitions again. It did, but watch if we play through those transitions. Well, it's a straight cut. It's a straight cut. It That's, is a straight I don't, cut. I don't get it. Why is it doing a straight cut? Well, the reason is, if we go back to motion just to look at what's happening, by default, if we look down in the timeline, the transition in, in motion when you start is a, tra a straight cut. Oh, it, by it is a cut. I see it's that. It's going from transition A to transition B. So when you're creating transitions in motion, that's the starting point, and then you get creative after that. But for, in our case, we don't care about that. We like that it's a straight cut because we now have a straight cut on the video, but if I press Control S, you still, oh, look at that. There's all your crossfades. Yeah, we've got our overlapping audio just the way we want. Yet, that's actually a, that's actually pretty cool what you just did. It's you, pretty nice. You, you didn't do anything in motion. You just, no. you created a transi <laughs> transition and just saved it. Just saved it. Just published it. Just published. That's hilarious. And, yeah. So now I've got uh. straight cuts on video and nice crossfades on audio, which when you're doing a montage type of video set to music is often exactly what you want. Wow. Well. <laughs> Most impressive, as Darth Vader <laughs> would say. Anyway, so I hope you uh, hope you like that one. That was a really good one. If you uh, want more, uh, check out our YouTube channel. We have we're publishing videos every week now. Follow us on Twitter and check out Mark's excellent motion training. He has 17 hours of motion training. If you really want to learn it, he's the guy to learn it from. We want to thank you again for watching another episode of MacBreak Studio.